Hi everyone, my name is Sirka Maimundok and I'm a second year Master of Occupational Therapy student at the University of Tennessee Health Science Center. Today's in-service presentation is on time management for the new OT practitioner or the OT student. The learning objectives for today are following this in-service, the learners will identify why time management skills are important and identify time management strategies they will try to implement in school, on field work, in their future jobs. So let's get started. What is time management? According to mindtools.com, it is defined as a process of organizing and planning how to divide your time between specific activities. Failure to manage your time causes stress and damages your effectiveness. First, I would like for you guys to take a little quiz to figure out how good your time management is. Then I'd like for you guys to go to the Padlet, type your results from the quiz, and tell me your current time management strategies, whether it's a to-do list, reminders on your phone, a planner, or just whatever works best for you. As occupational therapy students, I believe we have learned the importance of time management through our crazy school schedules. I found reasons why time management is important on the website brainbridge.com, which can be found in the re references in case you wanted to look into it. But a few of the reasons I chose are it improves self-discipline and shows your future employers you are accountable and will be able to reach deadlines when given. It reduces stress. Good time management skills allow you to meet deadlines and not stay up all night worrying about the assignment or project you have coming up. It enhances your decision-making skills. As we all are probably familiar with, you don't make the best decisions when you're stressed out or tired. By having good time management skills and a set schedule, you can avoid this altogether. Last but not least, you can accomplish more. By being in control of your time, you will have better productivity, which is so great for your future employers. This can result in additional benefits, a promotion, or just well-deserved recognition. While doing some research, I came across something known as the four Ds of time management from the Omnis Group blog. The four Ds are delete, delegate, defer, and do. I thought this would be a useful tool for our upcoming level two field works. The first D is delete. This focuses on filtering through your task list. Delete what doesn't need to be done anymore so it's out of sight and you can relieve some stress. Also with this category, the blog talked about the importance of learning to say no when you have too much on your plate. Always review what's on your to-do list so you don't overextend yourself and you can't get it all done. Your mental, mental health is far more important. The next D is delegate. If there's a task, you can delegate to someone else and do so if they're able to take it. It's important to make sure the person you delegate it to has a skill, time, and capability of completing the task or can actually end up being more stressful. This can be very applicable to the current class we're in healthcare management and policy. Defer, this category focuses on prioritizing your to-do list. Defer the tasks that have a later due date until you finish the ones that have a closer deadline. And last but not least, do. Do it is a last D. Filter through your task list and prioritize the due tasks um, that are the assignments and projects that are the most urgent. So next, we're going to talk about various resources and strategies for good time management skills. There are so many resources out there for us to use and it just depends if you prefer technology or pen and paper. I personally prefer pen and paper because I like to make to-do lists, I have a planner and I have a weekly schedule that keep track of all the assignments we have and any appointments, synchronous lectures or meetings. First, we'll look at the technology. The smartphone is an amazing invention because you can set up reminders, have alarms, add important dates or events to the calendar, have your email on there and download apps to help you organize everything and then it's all in one place. One app I found during my research that kept coming up is called Task Timer and it's free on the iPhone. It is a great app to use to see how much time you spend on tasks throughout the day each week. Next, we're going to look at the two PDFs I attached on Blackboard. There are free printable schedules I found on the internet that you are free to use. One is a weekly schedule and the other is a to-do list. I'm going to share that with you guys now. So the first one is the weekly schedule. Well, okay. I really like this one because um, it has the times throughout the day. It also has the um, 
columns for each day of the week. I do wish that the spaces were a little bit bigger, but that's okay. Um, so for example, if you are in the school for one of your first, or for one of your level two field works, if you had a IEP meeting from eight to 9.30, you could add that on there. And then you could just fill it out with all the clients you'll see throughout the day. Um, it is important with these weekly schedules to uh, follow HIPAA rules and not have the client's first and last name on the schedule and have just the schedule laying out. We do want to be mindful of that. Um, the next one is this to-do list, which I really like. Um, it, I think, really follows the four Ds of time management really well because it has this section up here that says today's top priority, so that's your do. Um, and the additional task section can be like your defer, so things that need to get done, but not necessarily right now. I like the appointment section as well, just because you could add your client schedule there. And then the call, email, or text section is really good in case you need a reminder to email Professor Flick one day or your supervisor. Um, I really like that to-do list there. Um, so now we're gonna talk about the importance of having effective time management skills for the biggest and probably the most expensive test I think we'll ever take in our lives, the NBCOT. So studying for the NBCOT um, will be a very stressful time in our lives. As many websites I found say, um, you probably wanna study five to eight weeks in advance of your test date, which of course, keep in mind, it can be different for everyone. We are not the same, there's not a one size fits all, but it is important to come up with a good study plan, um, which means it's important to have good time management skills. Um, an article I found on AOTA titled, Developing a Successful NBCOT Study Plan, um, gave an example of a five-day week schedule that they had for studying. Show that to you guys again. Um, so here's the example from the um, AOTA website. So on Monday, they took the time to practice tests to mimic the testing situation. The environment was very similar to the actual testing environment. Um, on Tuesday, they um, reviewed practice exam questions for two hours in the morning and two hours in the evening. Um, and they took notes on what they need to continue reviewing, things that they got wrong, what um, they don't think they would remember. And then Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday, they studied for two hours in the morning and two hours in the evening, and they studied the material that they took note of during those practice exams. Um, and then Friday, they had their day off. Once again, this is not going to be the same schedule for everybody. Um, this was just an example, and I'm not sure how far out they were from the test whenever they made this schedule. But this is another schedule that I got from a friend that is a pediatric OT. She was kind enough to send me her schedule that she made um, for when she was taking the NBCOT. And you can see here that she has it uh, scheduled out weekly for each month, what she was gonna study. And we can see that her test day was September 21st. So this is another kind of more general schedule. Um, like once again, it's not gonna look the same for everybody. But I just wanted to show you those two example schedules um, to reiterate the importance of having good time management skills now so it can roll over to when it's time to study for the NBCO team as it's very important to have a good study schedule in order to fully prepare and pass the test. So last but not least, we are going to go through some tips or advice on time management skills from practitioners that are out in the field the OTs I talked to for this in-service are from the pediatric setting and acute care setting. So what they may say is not across the board inappropriate in all settings, but just a glimpse into what we could expect in a little over the month and for the rest of our lives. So for acute care, she said that documentation is very important in this setting because of how fast paced it is. At the acute care she's at, her average day looks like eight evaluations 
Um, she has a document based evals within two hours of seeing the client and she will have a couple of treats to do throughout the day. Um, she does have a, there are OTAs there that will usually do the treatments. She said that chart review is so important before seeing the clients because of how fast paced the environment is. She always take note, takes notes in her notepad during chart reviews and takes it with her to add additional notes from the interview. Um, she said that at her hospital, that because of the pandemic, they are not allowing overtime, so she has to clock in and clock out at a certain time. So it's important that she has good time management skills throughout the day, so she gets all her work done um, between that time because they usually do not take home work um, in the acute care setting. So for pediatrics, um, the advice that my fr OT friend gave to be a planner and make lists. She um, writes down important things that need to be done that week. She said that the paperwork can seem endless in pediatrics, so it's important to have good time management skills in this area. Um, she looks ahead several months for upcoming reevaluation so she can make a schedule and prioritize what order the reevals go in so she isn't doing three to four reevals a week, and usually all the paperwork is due on the same day. She said that any chance or downtime she gets throughout the workday, she will work on her daily notes, she'll work on other paperwork, work on a section or two of the evaluation like scoring assessments. Um, this also cuts down on paperwork that she takes home. She schedules her preschool kids that she sees weekly in advance because they have so much time per week, so scheduling them in advance ensures they're getting their time in while her outpatient kids usually have set times. Um, I should have said this before, but she works at a developmental preschool um, therapy clinic and they also have outpatient. Um, she said that time management is a very big important component where she works because her employer wants to ensure that they get their work tasks done by their deadline, but also that they have time to enjoy their personal life at home. So today, I hope you were able to identify why time management skills are important and identify time management strategies you will try to implement in school, on field work, and in future jobs. Time management will look different for everyone, and it's okay if you don't stick with it every day, but having a plan is better than nothing. Um, I hope I didn't stress you all out with the little tidbit about the NBOCT. That was not my intention, but we're all going to go do great when the time comes. I just wanted to iterate, reiterate the importance of time management skills. Um, don't forget to take the Google survey at the end of the video to tell me your biggest takeaway and what strategy you will implement during the work. I hope you guys all enjoyed this. Um, thank you for listening. I hope you guys have a great day.